Page, uh, one of the members of the Page Live Team. I originally started from the Debian side. Actually, originally, originally from the Page Live side, I was just combining with a strange architecture for Page Alpha, and Linux, and Page Alpha. And later on, I packaged in 2005 for Page Live for Debian. And then I got more and more involved into Page Live itself upstream. And now, I, since 2007, I've rewritten the whole infrastructure. So, um, yeah, the talk is about distributing tech life because we get on the mailing list often questions, we often see problems, things that distributions have messed it up, how to package tech life. Um, I say, I mean, it's written here, uh, distributing tech, but since we are speaking about uh, Unix or whatever, it, why does this look so strange? Anyway. Uh, it's mostly page life. Thomas Esser stopped working on T page. Probably most of you have heard of T page in uh, several years ago. Anyway, and so now most is, most distributions now practically all use page life as the base. So what is page life? Page life is a distribution of page with a lot of things. It aims as in con. Also, okay, well that's the overview. Uh, I don't need to see this. So what is tech? I don't will not speak about tech. Um, I don't give an introduction to tech. I hope everyone knows how to program tech, especially these nice things here with a lot of expand after. Um, but this is not today's talk. Today is more about tech life and how to package it. So it started in 93, that is quite some time ago, when the touch tech user group uh, started to distribute. That was long before it was called tech life. And from 95, we, we, they shipped uh, as a CDs at that time based on T-Page, Thomas Esser Tech. And 96C saw the first version called Tech Live. At that time, what we came this live from at that time, it was, it was actually a live system. So plugged in the CD into the drive and had a running page system on it. That is unfortunately not possible anymore because we run out of space. Uh, the next few steps in 2005, uh, in 2000, is when the most, also all the non-free software was removed. Uh, I just mentioned the big steps. In 2002, we added macOS support. 2005, uh, it's not so important. From 2006 to 2009, Carl Berry took over from Robin and saw the addition of CPEG. So now very common, especially for multilingual typesetting. Uh, yeah, CPEG stopped being developed and it took about 10 years that it got phased out of the development. Since 2007, we have the Take Life Manager in, in production. And in the last years, that coincides with my move to Japan, I'm now living in Japan, uh, the Japanese Take support was introduced with Take where and Uptake. So these are different extensions for the very complicated Japanese type set. And last year, that was just for another pet project of mine is to rewrite update mapping. Okay. okay, what are the features of Tech Life? Well, it aims to be complete. So everything that is free, according to FSF guidelines, should be included. Actually, we want to have everything in on CPAN, so we pull everything from CPAN. CPAN is the comprehensive tech archive network. Most people have probably known the CPAN, the Perl, so that's very similar. Um, we have currently what is 2,474 packages, so that means one package consists often up to hundreds of files. That means one package from CPAN, font set, uh, macro package, or whatever. It is multi-platform and multi-operating system. We are currently supporting 10 different architectures uh, so we have 10 architectures, 8 operating systems, and well, the combinations amount to 18 combinations because you cannot combine everything with everything, where we ship actual binaries with page life. So we, we, dist we have our own distribution channel, and we ship the binaries for these architectures. It is uniform across platforms, so t was only Unix. Uh, we have, we, this is, so page life is now shipped or from Windows, Mac OS, and, and all Linux, uh, the Unix distributions. We have our own package manager, Take Live Manager, which is responsible for a huge amount of things. And well, since I've rewritten the infrastructure in 2007 to 9, we have now daily updates. So when uh, author submits a new version to the CTAN system, it, well, we get notified, and then by semi-automatic process, 
This stuff is included in our subversion repository, and from the subversion repository, once by day, there is a rebuild stage and pushed out to the FIFA network. So that is what that was actually a big error because now everybody complains. Hey, I've seen three days we don't have any updates. And well, we are trying to be deep in free or FSF free, EFSG free, with a few exceptions we don't care for. Some, I'm a Debian developer, but at the moment I take off the Debian developer and put them in the test. I've had some crazy freaking regulations not to include nice fonts and layouts. Typical example is, for example, the font installation guide, which is from Lehman, has a very nice laid out font, very beautiful presentation, which you cannot ship because the fonts are commercial. We ship the source code of the document, but we cannot ship the font, so we cannot ship the nice PDF. And yeah, so but in the Debian on the Tech Life side we do this. So these are the only differences to the Debian rules. So what are our dis Tech Life, our distribution channels? We have one DVD per year. It's normally in June around. And this stays for about one year and you can go back quite some time. But most people nowadays use it very conveniently. We have, we call it Tech Life Network Distribution. You just download a very small installer, which is written in Perl. And on, on, for Windows, we have to ship the Perl installer and suck up all the installation. This changes daily, practically, on the CSAN network. So, and this is where also the Tech Life Manager pulls stuff. Okay. For this people, so that was a bit of background of, on what tech life is. So now what, I mean, I assume, well, I don't assume much of what the, that you know about tech, but there are a few things you have to know. And the one thing is that that is something which creates always problems in the distribution system, that we have configuration files that are stacked and non-stacked. So what are the non-stacked? This is quite easy. This is like most configuration files we have in a, in a distribution system. We have a, a hierarchy of trees, and the most, also the, the, the strong, the uppermost in the hierarchy file is picked up as configuration file. Think about whatever a configuration file, a local user program, often is ships as general configuration in etc, and you can have your in your home directory a, the same configuration file, but with attachments, and then your personal copy is, has a higher priority. So, but then the old one is normally not. Well, it depends. So that if it's not stacked, then only yours is ready. In contrast to this, these are stacked. So we have every copy of the file. We are here considering not different names, but always the same file name. All files of the same are all evaluated. So these are two different levels. We will see examples in a minute. So what are, and these are for packages, for read distributors. They have so, I mean, I know I'm in, in the same position, I'm also packaging, but also writing. There are practically four files, more or less, well, this is a group of files, that have to be taken care of. That are the central configuration files that they like. The first one most people have heard about is this, the takemf.com. That's the general configuration file. Normally, not many things have to be changed. This is since 2012 stacked. So the tech programs read all the tech and F config file it finds and evaluate them in, in the proper way. And update made from config, this is for embedding fonts. So there are, we know there are thousands of fonts in the tech system and how to the, the different engines, DVI-PS, DVI-PDFM, XDVI, how they use fonts and which fonts are used. This is governed by this one. This is also since 2012 stack, so all the update map files are ready. In contrast to the non-stacked ones, these are format utilities. So this is a definition of formats, which are memory dumps. This is more probably from where well, we come to take this later. And language definition files, in fact, they, are, they provide which hyphenations are available in a page system. So let's go through this four files or five groups one by one. So TechMF config that has a lot of settings, but for distributions, I want you to only to remember you the only thing you should change in most cases is the path, because that might change where you put the files. 
So these are the trees that are predefined in the TechMap config file. And here, R is the root, what, what in the TechLife system how would be TechLife 2012 at the moment. So the, and they are also in increasing order. So this is the, so, so, uh, well, actually, this one here is the uppermost, and this is the lowest. So a, a file that is found here overrides a file that is found here. TechMap, if this, this is where 95% of the files are, that about 20,000 or 50,000 files, they are here. TechMF local straightforward, this is what the system wide uses, TechMF main, that might get dropped with 2013, because there's, we, we had an idea to have the shareable, non-shareable components, but it turned out nobody actually used it, and you can use it even without this. And then are the, the system var so variable data, generated data, and configuration files. The user tree in home directory and the user. So these are the files, uh, the trees that are predefined. And distributors often change them. Um, for example, in Debian, this, this one is used as a share tech life tech MF disk. This is user local share tech MF. This is this is user share tech life tech MF and so on. So we change this. And the only thing is, yeah, typical example is, for example, tech MF sysconfig. What was sysconfig? It's the system wide configuration for this whole installation. So it makes sense to have, for example, etc tech MF. And this is then a fully standard tech directory standard compliant tree. So what is the normal things we recommend to do for the redistributors is adjustment of these tree locations. Maybe add some trees that make sense. This is something we do in Debian. And anything else should not be necessary. I mean, there are memory adjustments if, if, if you, but we have set up the values in a way that even if you start everything, you shouldn't find any memory limit. So, if you actually hit this, then, then you probably know what you have to do or you can ask us. So as I said, this is a stacked one. So since all of them are red, you don't need to copy all of it. Just like here, create a new file back in my config and put in only the change values, nothing else. It's very easy if you check the Debian system, as a currently we see it with stage life 2012. So we have a very simple configuration file that consists of four lines. Three lines, just a few pass adjustments. Nothing else should be done. Okay, that was the easy case. So, what is the other thing? Config update map, configuration map. So, what is update map? Update map is a very strange piece. Actually, it's a meta processor for directives. So, what it is, it reads the config files. In the config files, there are references to map files. These map files contain font definitions and the update map merges them all together and generates proper configuration files for DVDI, BDFM, PDF tech, DVIPS and some other programs because the formats slightly differ here. And there are also some options here. So which font do you want the Adobe or the URE fonts? Then that is something important. Every change in the availability of fonts, what it means a user installs a new font package, a user removes the font package, needs adaption of these files and needs a rerun. This is one of the core areas for most distributors. They just don't do this. And then users are surprised that they manage, oh well, a well, lot of error messages. Since it is stacked, since 2012, it's stacked now. Local system adaptions can be easily handled by just putting them in TechMap local or in some other tree. So they are local. In Debian, for example, we have the TechLife ships everything under user share TechLife, and other font packages in user share TechMap, and each one generates its own update map and config file. So that is something packagers, distribution should remember. If you have a change in your availability of fonts, you have to rerun update map. This otherwise, and you have to regenerate the file or change it. Otherwise, the, the user will see strange things happening. So what is this new operation mode I just mentioned, just that you see what's going on? So all update map config files are read in these trees. 
And so this is the highest priority, this is the lowest priority, the highest priority. So you forget the user mode for now, just the system mode. For distributors, the user mode is not interesting. And then, so that means that, well, we have, for example, one, we ship in, in, in take life, then we have this file and this file. This file contains all the font definitions that are there in, in take life. This one in techmf main contains only the general settings. And the rest is up to the user. For example, on my system, I have several fonts I purchased or I, ha I installed from different sources. I put them in techmf local and just put the respective maps file in this. That's all. And then run update maps, so it's nothing else. People who have seen Tech Life before on Debian remember this comment update, update map. That is gone. No need anymore. Because update map now reads all files. Okay, next configuration file, also very prone to get forgotten by redistributors, is the format utilities. Which format? So that is from a time. Yeah, when I look here, then probably everyone has used computers at this time. When Knut wrote this back in the 80s, there was not, there was speed and memory was a big issue. So he devised a, in his cache program on Metapont a mode, where, what init mode, which was a bit more evolved, but had more features, but it took more time, that loaded all the the initial definitions and then dumped out a, a form, a memory dump, so to say, and then later runs just loaded this memory up. And this is, yeah, it's 2013 now, but this is still what's happening in the tech world. Yeah, you don't have to wonder. I mean, new formats like LuaTech got rid of this, but still we have the fact that these formats, these dumps have to be recreated. So, um, input file for this, yeah. One of the, so this format duty.com specifies the, how to generate these dumps. This is the, 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 the content of the format duty.com. And it's not stacked. So there's only one. You cannot override local stuff, but this is also something which normally don't happen. Font additions are very common in this, in this system. Many people have to assist themselves. <coughs> Think about in a, in a university department or, com or a company, you have your private font, your, your, your uh, yeah, identity, so some company font, the university font, which you have to use. So this My new formats are relatively rare, I have to say. Um, again, like with update maps, every change with the availability of formats needs a regeneration or adaption of this file and a rerun of format availability. So this is something which also happens depending on your package manager from the distribution side, you install, you remove. This is something that has to be taken in account. Hyphenation patterns, that's actually a group um, since, I don't know, three years now, we have this dot dot lua, that's for lua tech, the definitions. Again, during format generation, these formats read in hyphenation patterns. And this is in a special format, and these, these hyphenation subpatterns are dumped together with the memory format. So that's all. Yeah, back in the 80s, could everything be read nowadays more easily, but well, that's transition in progress. So if change is to hyphenation, and this language, start, language, dev, and that do are they defined for different engines, for the late, so this is for the late tech based, this is for the e tech based, and this is for newer tech based. And again, if something changes, please remember something changes in the hyphenation, you have to repeat the format. Otherwise, it doesn't match. I mean, that is something what, what I remember last year, we got the question, what's going on? We installed the new hyphenation, but I, when I run later, it tells me not available. Well, the format was not regenerated. That's the simple point. Exception is that this one is a runtime file, so you don't have to do anything but to fix it with the load. So other things uh, with respect to tech life is you, if you want to packages, you know, have to know a bit about the structure. So we have a hierarchy of packages. On the top are schemes. We have currently nine schemes. They collect together. Well, we have overlapping contents. So they, they are not exclusive. So typically a theme smart, context, theme normal, theme everything. So these are the top levels. 
That is what in our installation process, the user gets asked on the front side, what do you want to install? Do you want to have everything? Or we have a CMT tag which tries to resemble key tech at the time. In the middle, there are collections. There are 80, 84 at the moment, I think yesterday. They are non-overlapping. Yeah, that means they are a partition of the contents. This is important why package managers are not, distribution packages are not happy when one file is in two packages. I mean, there are conflicts, you know this. Probably so, these collections will keep them uh, non-overlapping, so a partition of the contents. So they collect related material. So we have LaTeX, formats, extras, so some extra strange formats for our Arabic language support, all kinds. And on the lowest level, we have package, take live packages. We have now 2000, what was 2490 something. This is the smallest unit. They relate directly to what the, an author, a package writer, uploads to CPAM in 99.9%. .9%. Typical examples, Pima, ComaScript, PGF, things you, you might, what you use, for example, when you use later, use package P, PGF or something. So these are the, this is the hierarchy of packages. And other things that are necessary for packaging, at the end you will have to pick contact with this beast here. It's it, before 2007, that was not existing. <coughs> there were thousands of single files, which might also be nice, but they were in XML. And who wants to parse XML? Nobody. Um, so when I rewrote this, it, it, I changed the format into something much more uh, adjustable to, well, command line parsing, Unix tools. It's just package description files of Debian. If you know what the packages file in Debian are, there are stanzas separated by MTR, also by a new line, and that's it. So we have this, this, this take life database describes the whole state of one installation, meaning also the whole state of the take life network, even when it's compressed. It's a simple text file, so plain lines, we have revision numbers for single packages. This is always generated from static content, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of Perl models for those. I mean, I come back to this later on. So how does it look like? Very easy. But if you have seen one of the packages filing table, you know, well, there's name Apple, that's one of the package name, or name MR, and then other rest, and in between is an empty line. So it's a sequence of key value pairs, separate by an empty line or more. And you have one group per package, so they take live package. And we have some meta package. So uh, that is, for example, an example I copied from two days ago, the Droid font. So here's a typical example. So you have the name, what kind of categories, revision. This is our internal revision number from the subversion system, the highest change revision of all the containing files. This is what it is based on our tech life manager basis updates purely on the revision number, non, not on version numbers, because version numbers in the tech life are horrible. They are going up, down, wobbling around. So they, they are not definitely always increasing, but with some version number, revision numbers we are. Then we have a short and a long description. I, I deleted the rest of the long description. They are taken from the tech catalog. We have execute. We will discuss this later on. This can be forgotten. This might be interesting. Doc files, so that are documentation files. Then here comes indent by one space, the list of documentation files. They can have some tags here. Oh, that would be really nice. Then we have source files, which are used to generate and run files. These are the ones that have to be actually installed, because they are used for running. And there, are, there is additional catalog data, like where it is found on the CTAM network, when it was last updated on the catalog, what is the license according to the catalog, and what is the version according to the catalog. So this is one of these of the files. So you might ask where this, this we, we mentioned this exit, I mentioned this execute, and I mentioned the four configuration files. The, well, the first is the take map content, but then the fonts, the hyphenation, and the format. So these, where is this information coming in? This information is coming exactly from this execute method. Think about it, 
as a like a post install action trigger. You have to do something. So here are the, the execute statements. The one is add map, add mixed map, and add country map. It's simple. In this update make config file, there can be either a statement map, blah blah, mixed map, blah blah, or country map. Uh, so typical line is this one. It means you should add a line map grotesque to your update make.config file. And when you remove this package, you should remove this map line again because it's not here anymore. And mixed map and country map have different for country map but that is Japanese. So the, for the formats, we have add format. Don't ask me why I have sometimes lower and sometimes upper. It's just historically, I think. Um, that is a bit more complicated. This is not the line exactly as it should end up. So it gives the name of the format, which engine. So the PDF LaTeX format is combined with the PDF LaTeX engines. This gives the language stuff. This is where the hibernation patterns are. And then some options what should be run. From this line, we have a Perl code, but you can easily pass it yourself. One line for format utility.com has to be generated. And for hyphen, we have, that's getting more complicated. We have the name, Basque, for example. Then these are configuration options, how many, where you can put the hyphen. You cannot split the word in one character on the left side and all the rest. It's uh, some rules, linguistic rules that are not allowed, so they are put here. And then loader files and hyphenation patterns file and some exceptions if there are. From this, again, you can generate the SQL code available in a nice form but you can easily do it yourself by reading the specification, uh, generate the, the, the language stuff, the stuff of your file. So these execute statements have to be taken into account. So if you package something, take like for a distribution, you, and you split into smaller units, you have to think about, well, if, I, if my, the user installs something that relates to one of these execute statements, then, then the package manager has to do something. So, packaging paradigma, how do we package these things? We are now at 3.6 gigabyte that is take live. Um, that makes it, first of all, I, I didn't count the number of files, and that makes it very, as of now, completely impossible to do anything by hand. I mean, checking everything by hand, it takes years. So, there are different ways to package split or not split. So the first one I would say all or nothing. There's one distribution package which contains everything. You have one package, it's called Tech Live or Tech or whatever. Um, yeah, first method. It has some advantages and some disk. Collection splitting, you see split at the collection level. Uh, single, single packages, so you split one distribution package, like whatever, Merges as a next to one take live package, and then there's mixed mode. Let's go through them. So, all or nothing. So, the advantage of the all or nothing is yeah, well, it's easy. You don't have to care. The good thing is, you don't have to care for the configuration file. You just install what we are shipping because if you remove, then you remove everything. Right. So, that's the nice thing. But I wouldn't recommend it. I, we get even uh, in other distributions already complaints. Oh, it's 200 megabytes. It's too big. So if whenever a user wants to install tech, has to install 3.6 gigabyte. I, so I'm not sure if most people will be happy. So I don't know any distribution is uh, using this at the moment. Uh, hmm? Yeah, well, that's different how to build it. And the Debian also uses four huge tarball. But what you ship in Debian at the end, you build from the, these four huge tarballs, we build 90 or 100 binary packages. And this is what the user installs and sees, because the user doesn't see the build process. This is different if you are a port system, or in VSD, where you, you have to download everything. Or, I don't know, some other distributions, I don't know. So that's might be a real problem, yeah? So collection splitting, the advantage is that it is somehow nice to the package manager of the distribution, because as I said, collections are a partition of the content, so there's no overlap. So you know if you have a file which is contained in one collection, the package, 
then it is definitely not in other, so there are no file conflicts for the security package manager. And there are not too many individual files. So that was when, when I proposed in 2005 to package that live to Debian. I said, okay, what should we do? Should, as I proposed in the take live mailing list, these different options, say, should we have one Debian package for one take live package? That would be, yeah, at that time, 2000 something packages when, well, the Debian crowd cried at me, never, because it would double suddenly the number. Of Anyway, so that is, that's a nice thing. The disadvantage is that the packaging is not trivial because you have to collect all, all containing packages, you have to collect all the execute statements. So then you have to invest a bit of time and to automatize this because you don't want to do it, well, maybe you want to do it once per year, but you might do it more often. So Debian and, and Ubuntu, well, the Ubuntu just paid for this in Debian, which it has to change. So, Package splitting, so this is straightforward, very fine grain, nice, simple, clear. Allows also to do very quick fixes for single packages if you want. Disadvantage is the huge number of packages, as I mentioned before, 2000 or 3000, I don't know. So this is something has to think. As far as you know, Fedora and SUSE are taking this approach. Okay, mixed mode, um, I don't know. I cannot see anything, but that I know that some some ESD variant. Okay, let's do a distribution breakdown. From what I know, I guess at the round, I searched with the internet for what, what they are doing. So Debian Ubuntu is, we know since Edge, we have uh, Take Live in it. It was in 2005. It's based on collection splitting. Fedora has Take Live since uh, FC6 and uses packet splitting. SUSE since SLAE, whatever, Enterprise 11, and OpenSUSE something, package splitting. FreeBSD uses also package splitting since 2009. OpenBSD was one of the first after, after our uh, um, uh, Debian in 2007, which is the only one using <coughs> mixed splitting with about four packages. NetBSD, there was recently on our mailing list a big discussion how to do. Then we have, I, well, it's not completely correct to use discuss this thing, but we have macOS. We have since MacTech since many years is based on Take Live, ships Take Live as is with some graphical interface, nice, very good integration. On Windows, we have Cortex, which is a slightly repackaged. We have Take Live by Tech, practically the same, and we have the independent MacTech distribution. So let's go through the distributions a bit in detail. So Debian. So Woody had TTH1, Sarge TTH2, Edge TTH3, and TTH Live 2005, where we had both parallel. So we, we tried for some time, we didn't know what will happen. TTH, at that time, TTH was, it wasn't clear how it would continue. But then since then, we had 2007, Squeeze 2009, and VC will be have 2012. So well, more or less almost what is actually, also currently on file. Ubuntu had a hard time a bit to take live because they always release just before or froze the, the redistribution just, just before I could get out the packages for Debian. So Hardy had to like 2007. All these ones, Precise, I think that is the biggest one. Precise just, just released in April and the Debian packages came out in April. So that didn't work out nicely. But well, yeah, I mean, I have a real life also. <coughs> Quantile, so the, diff, the current development has taken life 2012, and for precise, there are PPAs for 2012. So we have one package per collection. We have, um, that's also something I will mention a bit later on, that the ar architecture dependent files, so the real binaries, not scripts, the real binaries are built from a different pack source package and also ships a different binary package. Why? We want to keep application to a minimum. And if you know a bit about Debian, well, if you have a package that is for every architecture, so or then uh, any, then, then you don't have a complicated application. You just have it once in the archive. But if you have to compile something, then you have to every, for every architecture supported in Debian. So we keep that to a minimum and ship everything uh, in architecture independent files. Our Tech Life route, this is now about 2012, this new user share Tech Life, that's new since 2012. 
So we have user share take life taking match this, user share take life taking that. We add an additional tree, which we call TechMF Debian, which is user share TechMF, where packages that are not in, well, we are packaged separately from Tech Life are ins installing some. And we have something I think that is the only distribution actually having this persistency that's a requirement in Debian. You probably know persistency of administrative changes. So if someone changes some of the hyphenation patterns or the format definitions, and removes the package and installs the package, these changes have to be persistent. That is something particular to Debian. I don't know any, well, Ubuntu, any other distribution who has this. And that creates a lot of problems. Of course, it's not so easy. <coughs> Fedora, well, we have Fedora, yeah, T-Tech. 2007 came into 6. And 2010, interesting, is available in 13 and 14, and 11 from 13 to 7, and now we have to backwards for the others. Mm -hmm. They use a single package splitting again. So one file, uh, one Fedora package for one tech package. They did very big thanks from our side, from our tech side, a very detailed license check. In the consequence of this, a lot of packages have been either removed or checked with the original authors. Please give us a, a, a decent license statement so that created over the last years a nice clean up of over many things. Uh, there are no persistency of administrative changes. The post installation script of Fedora just changes configuration files down into shared life. And well, if the administrator wants to change something, it gets lost afterwards. SUSE has 2010, so these are, I mean, if I, Especially outside Debian, if one of the distributors wants to correct me, I'm open, but this is what I could grasp from the net. So we have now 12.2 has both, and the, the uh, development version has 2012. Again, single package splitting. They use, they merge these two trees, TechMF dist and tech, our TechMF two trees, into one user share TechMF. That might be something that will anyway happen next year also for the te whole take life distribution that we got rid of this split. They have the configuration files in etc TechMF and set it up as uh, TechMF sysconfig, but no persistency. So if you change a format or something, then it, and you remove and reinstall it, get lost. As our operating system, uh, free BSD, one pack splitting, also I couldn't really make out from cursory look how they, they handle this. OpenBSD is very long time since 2007. That was one of the first. That has an interesting splitting in base, minimal, full, and docs. How this is handled with overlapping files, I don't know. But it's since, it is, yeah, since 2007 up to 2012. NetBSD recently, someone came up at the take life distribution list and said, I want to package for NetBSD. I said, please look at the other BSDs, even if you hate them. Um, Mac OS, I mentioned already, has a very nice wrap up into Mac Tech. I hardly recommend it, but it's very well done. Windows, again, has take life upstream. We provide our own installer, graphical installer, wizard installer, and we have Protext. And then there's the independent big tech. Actually, now in the tech world, there are practically only two big, di uh, well, two distributions. This is take life, which is for everything, and big tech, which is for Windows. And take life is also for Windows. But MIGTECH has more, um, how to say, well, since it targets only Windows, it's, it's more streamlined for Windows. Let's put it. MIGTECH is available for Windows or BSD? But nobody ever. <laughs> 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 That's the best choice if you have to complete backup for Windows. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK. What I want to, to, to close is with, I, I mentioned already many things that distributors should take care into uh, when they are packaging take life, I want to come up with, again, with a few warning and common defaults. The first one is, I never use take life. I, I have no idea what take is, but I package it now. It sounds crazy, but we got, I, I have seen this, not too, not, well, and I can only say, yeah, okay, forget it, because it's impossible. It's not just running configure, make, make, install, and then drag it in, no. You have to please install it, please run it, please get to use what, what the system 
runs and after this sync about packaging. Improper configuration file handling is by far the biggest problem. What I mentioned all before, yeah, shipping, typical example, you ship parts of the life, you split it, but you ship the update make config file which we have in the distribution, which contains all the fonts. And that doesn't work out. So that is something while, well, the last 20 or half an hour I was talking about this configuration. That was in the last years often the case. A problem, especially for the BSD, is what is upstream. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the DVD distribution center that changes once. During this time, we have also create tar, big tar files, so whatever. But between these releases, once per year, we have daily updates to the state life net distribution, but there are no revision numbers, there are no SVN, there are no DX stamps, there is nothing. And there is no history. So we, the, the CETA network cannot keep copies for every day. That's impossible. Nobody has it. And that's a big problem for BSD ports, as far as I understand, because they have to download a fixed set and the scripts have to work on this set. But the problem is, I mean, this, the upstream, the download for, for, for building is a moving target. And then often the port building breaks. So that is something which is a problem. Yeah, I have to say, this is something I, I'm happy to, with anyone having suggestions, what we can do. But we don't have neither the disk space, nor the network capability, nor the resources to keep a history of every day's release. Yes? How big would it be in this case? Have you made any estimation? Probably, if, if you keep for one year, I don't know, 10 gigabytes, 15? It's more, it's more that someone has to set up and link it into the CETA distribution network. That is the problem. I mean, of course, or on the tax server where we repeat where the main artist is. I mean, there's something, yeah, there's something we are open if someone just says, I mean, there are scripts, so everything is available. Someone, if you think it's, it makes sense and you want to have this, it could be. But it's something one can discuss. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if the tax server is happy about this. So, but this, I know from PSD this is a real problem. I mean, um, binaries and source. Um, as I said, Tech Lab has its own distribution channels. We have our own installer, we have our own package manager, and we ship binaries. We don't repeat them during the year. We have, as I mentioned, 18 architecture OS combinations. The build process is a huge pain to get updated binaries from all the uh, builders sit on time. We don't have automated build system, we don't have anything. Like this, I mean, just a few volunteers. So we cannot do this during the year. There are private, independent repositories, so you can get updated binaries if you want. I myself have one for Japanese tech binaries where we fix stuff so that we can do. But in general, it is not. But our source repository, the subversion repository, changes permanently. Thomas Alopita is changing the packaging way permanently and that does so that means that it often does not relate the source repository to what actually is shipped. So you have to think about as redistributor, as in a distribution, what I'm I basing my binaries on. On the subversion, on the released version. So this is something you have to take a bit here. Okay, last and big warning, whatever the user tries for, don't the tech life manager. First, it will probably not work because you have no tech life manager. Second, you don't want an independent program messing around with the files that are under your distribution package manager control and change them, update them, change the MD5 stamps or whatever. You don't want it. Whatever the user says, you just say no. Please. <laughs> I mean, there is something, I have a patch for user mode test life manager. Nobody ever tested it. I called for tests. It's still open. Something that users can install the tech, also use the tech life manager to manage their home directories and use, so to say, the whole tech life infrastructure, which we provide as tech life, to 
to update and install new packages into the home page directory. But you should never allow the page life manager to mess around in your system. I mean, if, it's your if the distribution works in this way, then it's okay. But normally, I don't think that is any distribution wants outside programs to change this something. Recommendations, this is what I'm closing. So get to know the system. Yes, I mentioned before, I don't know take light, I don't know take, but I package it. No. Get to know, install it, run the normal installer. It's not, I mean, at the end, this space is for normal users not such a pain. I have on my laptop, which is a bit aged, I don't know how many installations of take light parallel. Learn Perl. Um, there are all the infrastructure, everything that that life is really driving this, everything is programmed in Perl. All the scripts, all the updates, all the sync precedents, everything in Perl, all the access to the database, to the, to the execute statements, all is wrapped up in Perl modules that are documented. So if, yeah, it helps. So look around, please. Also, if you think about for a new distribution, that is not based on one of the already. And look around what others have done. Take Life, it was first packaged in Given in 2005, and we have now many packages, many distributions are shipping. If you want to package it in new, look around. What I mentioned before with one of these BSD variants, what is net BSD, wants to start from scratch when there are three in or two independent other BSD packaging. I mean, yeah, waste of time. Select a paradigm that is fits your need. So for your distribution, for your political, also this is often a political, and given it was a political, I mean that there were no technical reasons, uh, that, re so that fits your distribution requirements, this paradigm, so everything, or single package, or in between. And last, please contact us. Yeah, we want to know, we can help you, we have enough experience in this kind of stuff. So if there are any problems, so this contact. So where can you contact us? So the main web page for Tech Life is there. There are a lot of sub pages. The main coordination is done on Tech Life Tag this, this is not user support. Please send your users to us. Please don't put them uh, if you have a request. This is for development. We often get questions from users. We often help, but it's for development. We have a specific uh, mailing list for distributions. It's not very active, they are like distros, but this is something where, where people from practically all the distribution maintain as a subscribe and have their knowledge. And if you want to contact <coughs> me and have questions, then I'm also here. Okay, I think it's exactly my time I have. Thanks for the attention, and yeah, I hope you didn't fall asleep. Okay, thank you.
because we need them for our distribution channel, for test life upstream. I say test life has its own installer, which you can, everyone, even a user without root permissions, can install in his home directory or running test life, it's no problem. And for this, the shift binary, pre-compiled stacks can be linked. These binaries have to be in the subversion because our packages are built from this subversion. But the distributors, like I, as Debian, sitting on the Debian developer head now, I don't use these binaries. I am not allowed even to use them. I have to build them on my build machine. And we use the newly built binaries in Debian, especially because there are many architectures or architecture Linux combinations that are not supported by the binaries we support in that life. So you, we have to, you have to repeat this. The binaries we commit to the subversion are purely our distribution channel, and we have to shift them because we want people to be able to click, 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 install and get the running system. And that's, of course, difficult because, I mean, we, we compile our binaries for our Linux on the oldest machine and the oldest OS we can find because otherwise someone cries, oh, I cannot find GVC2 or whatever, some library. So, yeah, that's the fact, unfortunately. So that's the reason why the compiler binaries we have to ship are mostly statically linked, are mostly fixed and ready, but distributors should not, never, never, never use them. Import, I mean, actually in Indian would be forbidden, they would be rejected out of the Any other questions? Good, thanks. Um.